Hey everybody, welcome back to Dryland with Zombie. I'm Zombie, in case you haven't met me yet. Um, if you're new here, hello, uh, welcome. Uh, my page is for skaters that are getting into the derby culture, into the derby world, and also into the skating world as well, in case derby's not your thing. Um, but today I figured I would do a repeat lesson, and this is going to be what's in Zombie's bag. And I did this last year. But there's been a lot of changes and with COVID still kind of out and about, um, we have made some changes to my bag. So hope you enjoy, hope you learn a lot, and hope this prepares you for becoming a derby player. Okay, so today's lesson is going to be more for the derby skater, um, but you know, any skater is welcome to enjoy. However, this is going to be more for those people that are in like the fresh beat groups, the boot camp groups, whatever your league decides to call them. The groups where you're teaching new skaters and new recruits how to do skating and how to do derby. And for those skaters that are learning right now and have not played derby yet, but they're getting close to playing derby uh, with their league, this is more for you because there is a lot of things that I feel you should keep in your bag. Um, to prepare yourself for being a derby skater and to prepare yourself for being an active member of your league. First things first, this is my bag. I didn't go over the bag last time. Um, this one in particular is Zuka. Um, and just as a friendly reminder, nobody sponsors me. So whatever you know brands I decide to recommend, that's because I've used plenty of brands and this is the one I fell upon. And I'm just recommending it. I wish I got sponsored. That would be great. But that's just not the case. So anyways. Um, this one in particular is TSA friendly. Um, here's a little seat. So in case it's extra crowded at the airports for any reason. Um, you could actually sit down on here. Or if you're at roller derby practice. And you all happen to practice outside. Um, I've had a few previous leagues. Where we didn't have seating to get geared up. This is a great place to actually do it. You could actually just sit right on top of here get your gear on and then get ready to roll so you're not sitting on the concrete or the wood flooring or whatever is outside so um that's my reason i recommend this one um you can choose different colors and patterns and stuff like that but they are a little bit expensive so if all you have is a duffel bag or a baseball bag i know in the past i've used a, a baseball bag because they have pockets for helmets um those are those work also so you know no worries if you can't afford one of these now no big deal um, I didn't get one until about five or six years into my derby career, so. Anyways, so uh, next item on my list is going to seem a little funny to most people, but toenail clipper. Excuse my nails, by the way. They haven't gotten done in a while. COVID. <laughs> um, but yeah, always keep a nail clipper with you. It could just be a basic generic one like this one. I think I paid. No, I actually think I got this one from work. <laughs> um. I actually left it in my pocket, in my scrub pocket, I think, is what happened, and I ended up with it. Hi, Chevy. Anyways, uh, these are great to keep because very occasionally toenails do break or you kind of slam your toe on the floor, your big toe, and then it breaks the nail or pushes it in. You've got to clip that if it's painful in order to continue, then you have an option to do that. So I always keep this here. Also, if you get, like, the little strings on the Velcros of your... Hi, Mikey. <laughs> Sorry, excuse the dogs. If you have little strings that are coming out of your Velcro from your elbow pads, your knee guards, or anything like that, you always have the option to kind of clip those off too. Um, so you have something to do that with in case they're getting caught everywhere. Hi, Stormy. We should just introduce the dogs one of these days. Oh, she thinks I have a snack. Go. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Go play. On my list are extra shoelaces. I know sometimes... We forget like the most basic needs of our gear. This is one of them. Um, these ones happen to be 84 inches and they are also uh, hockey laces so they're waxed. And that kind of just prolongs the life of the laces but they're always nice to have in handy. I've probably had these in my bag for a year and a half now um, without having used them. However, um, they're nice to have handy because every so often when you're at practice, those laces bust. And then you're like, oh shoot, I don't have anything else you know, to time I skate with. Now I can't practice anymore. Or worse, it happens in a game. Then you really don't have anything. And then now you're, 
you know, you're letting your whole team down because we don't have laces on your skates to keep you in your skates safely. So always grab an extra pair of these. They could always be fun colors too. They don't have to be black. I just choose black because they're easier. Thing on my list, I will say this is one of the most important ones to always keep in your bag besides your gear when you become a bouting skater your black and whites so for those of you that are new to roller derby and are getting you know accustomed to all the lingo that we're using and everything this one i still have from like when i played in san diego woohoo look at that pretty logo anyways um when any league refers to your black and whites they're referring to a black jersey and a white jersey um these are for scrimmages or if you have like mashup bouts, you know, things like that that are down the road. They do need your number. They don't need your name. Names aren't required. They're just more fun to have. <laughs> but yes, they do need your number on them that follow the WIFTEDA rules guidelines for your jerseys. Mine happen to be reversible. So I also have the number on the other side as well. Mine is reversible and I keep this at all times in my bag because you need them for scrimmages and to help the refs practice. Um, it's hard to really play safely when you don't know who's on your team or what numbers the person has that's getting a penalty and it's hard for the refs to learn that way. And if your refs can't learn, then you know it doesn't help you as a league either. Um, so help your refs out uh, where some of these and whenever you happen to drop in with other leagues as well, they're always going to require black and whites. That's kind of the generic of what most leagues use. So no matter where you go, who you drop in with later on when we're allowed to travel to other leagues and play with them again. Um, if you ever drop in in a practice and just want to hang out with them for, anything, for any reason, they're usually going to ask you to wear either black or a white. And this helps with drills as well. So when you're learning new drills, it's easier to see what you're doing when you can see who you're doing it with and how you, how to separate each team um, during the drill. So always keep some of those. Next thing that's really important as far as helping your refs learn and helping you all learn during new drills are armbands. These go up on your arm, on your sleeve, above your elbow pad. I don't really wear armbands because I normally iron on the numbers on my shirt sleeve. So I don't have to wear armbands and so I don't forget them. I'm ho horrible about forgetting these. If you do not have armbands, don't fret. Um, it's okay. You could always use permanent marker as well. And I normally have a permanent marker in my bag. And it's the, the anti-grease permanent marker. And it's actually a Sharpie brand that's gray. For the the part that you hold and then it has a yellow stripe and then it has a black cap I recommend those um, permanent markers because they tend to stay longer you don't have to redo the numbers every five jams or anything like that but yeah you definitely need these especially for games and and scrimmages on your list and this is always one of my favorites to keep in my bag is my t-tool um, for some reason you'll notice in my previous videos too I have like four or five different T-tools and every single one of them I have lost the Allen wrench that goes with it. But there's usually an Allen wrench in here. Um, try to keep track of that. Um, obviously I'm not very good at it. But my skate doesn't really require the Allen wrench so it's okay I guess for now. But this is a hex tool. So you don't have to carry so many different sized tools. Um, it has different sizes on it and then you can use it for like the different nuts and bolts on your skates um, especially if you skate outside or on flooring that's a little bit more bumpy your nuts tend to get a little bit more loose qu quickly um, so about every week or so I would check all of them and make sure they're okay if they seem to be loose just tighten it up a bit or sometimes very occasionally you know <laughs> things fall off while you're skating so that's why it's a good reason to keep this in your bag because it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it okay something to always keep in your bag no matter what whether you're doing roller derby or you're doing you know freestyle skating you're just skating on the beach um, on the coastline or you're you know jumping down in the bowls whatever you're doing in roller skating if you are on roller skates you should be wearing a mouth guard um, one to protect your teeth 
even when you're like not going that fast sometimes you slip and you you know eat shit <laughs> you hit the floor like i don't know how else to put it but you do it happens um you don't want your teeth to break just because of a quick slip um sometimes you hit like a little wet spot that you weren't aware of and <laughs> there you go and then pop your mouth so um you should always just be wearing mouth guard anyways but two it helps minimize head injuries um I know they're not as cute to wear, you know, it's not as cute to wear mouth guards as it is for everyone to see your smile. But, I mean, right now, nobody's seeing your smile anyways, for the most part, if you're wearing a mask, um, which is highly recommended. But we want to protect your brain. You only have one brain. So um, the one I have, the mouth guard I have is Sisu. That's the brand. Um, they fit in like a dental retainer. Uh, I don't know if mine will fit right now because I'm getting dental work done. Yeah, they they kind of fit. Um, they help for when you're speaking so that your teammates can hear you better. Um, it's a little bit safer to play when you can communicate, especially with a whole lot of, you know, cluster going on on the track. Um... <laughs> But also, like, you don't want to keep having to pull it in, take, you know, take it out, put it back in, take it out, put it back in, take it out, put it back in, just for people to understand you. And especially with COVID right now, we're not wanting to touch our mouths or our faces as much as humanly possible. So this minimizes that. Um, you don't have to sanitize as much because you're not going to be pulling out your mouth, mouth guard as often. Um, I pull mine out every so often, um, again, because I'm getting dental work, so they're not going to fit correctly for the next several months. Um that and the great thing about these mouth guards is they're reshapable um it's not one and done i believe on the packaging don't quote me on this because i could be wrong <laughs> go to the website to get the correct information but i believe it's about 20 ish times give or take that you can reshape one single mouth guard um so if you are getting done to work this one's great because you could actually just take it to the orthodontist or the dentist with you say hey by the way while we're doing you know, while we're tightening my braces or whatever, can we reshape my mouth guard so they could go over the braces? And they'll, they should be able to do that with for you for no problem. Um, the other thing is, when you're drinking water, you don't it's, you're not like choking or gagging on your giant mouth guard. This literally just stays connected to your teeth, and you don't really need to be removing it to drink water. So if you just need a quick sip or two, you know, you're having a hard practice. You know, just drink your water, you're able to swallow with this, no problem. Uh, it doesn't cover your palate, so it makes it easier to swallow. Um, so these are recommended. I have, like, the Max. There's different grades of mouth guards. Um, so there are some thinner ones, and there's some for children, youth, um, and then adult sizes. If you have a shorter jawline, um, I have really big teeth, um, so I have a huge jawline. So the adult size is fine for me. However, for people that don't have as much mouth as I do, <laughs> um, you can use the, the child size ones um, so that you don't have to clip the ends of the other mouth guards. Because when you clip the ends of the other mouth guards just for them to fit in your mouth, you're, you're basically rendering it useless or possibly useless, I should say. Um, because it's not straight from the factory that way. So we can't guarantee that those are actually working. So when you get these ones you could you know do different sizes and then the dentist could recommend how to you know make the adjustments for you that you need um if you don't have a dentist um you could kind of guess which size you need and then you could do it at home as well yourself it's not too hard um it, it does take a few tries sometimes but other than that it's not very hard um so yeah i definitely recommend these ones i have the max um because i do have previous head um, trauma not related to roller derby. <laughs> um, so I use the max just so that I could try to protect my brain as much as possible. I've added to my bag are like sanitary wipes of some sort or hand sanitizer. I have Lysol in my car, um, the spray cans. Um, I keep Lysol with me so that when I'm done with practice, I could kind of just give everything a little bit of spray, put it in my car and then, you know, let it sit for a little bit. Um, the hand sanitizer, obviously, because everybody has a hand sanitizer with them. So I have hand sanitizer in all my bags, my purses, my nursing bag for work, my car, just in case. Um, 
So I'm not going to take that out just because everyone knows what that looks like. Um, no big deal. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I have also started to do is um, effervescent for my mouth guard. Um, I know you're supposed to like brush them and everything like that. Um, by the way, you're supposed to brush your mouth guard. Um, however, I am having dental work. So if those of you are having dental work and you're consistently having to reshape your mouth guard, um, brushing it can get a little hard, especially when you start getting all those crevices and you know, like the braces. I have a permanent retainer that broke recently that we're trying to like maneuver so that we could remove it safely in a couple months. Um, without my teeth falling out because <laughs> it's shifted everything so much. But anyways, if you are one of those people that has dental work that's ongoing and you're continuing to change, um, you know, jaw structure and everything like that, um, I've added effervescence to my, <laughs> to my bag so that when I'm done with practice, I can take my mouth guard and then I could just put it right in water for a little bit, help everything set up and help everything loosen and then you could brush a little as best as you can in there with all those different crevices and you know having to go over braces or whatever um it's, it's a lot harder to brush those correctly than if you were to just wear your mouth guard and pull it out without any you know extra dental stuff in there any extra shapes <laughs> a smooth smoother surfaces are a lot easier to clean than bumpy surfaces so i've also added that to my bag as well Another thing I like to keep in my gear bag, my roller derby bag, is a whistle. Um, I always keep a whistle with me because you never know when you're going to ref. I previously was a ref before I did roller derby. Um, but if you are learning and you're about to join roller derby, you're about to pass your skills or whatever your league has set up um, to move you from a new skater to a bouting skater, always have a whistle with you. Um, it is recommended to have a Fox 40 whistle. They're a little bit more expensive um, than a regular basic whistle. However, they, you will notice that the sound travels a whole lot further, quicker, and just the tone, like the pitch, I guess the pitch, yeah. The pitch of these um, is a lot easier to hear, um, especially for those that are hard, hard of hearing on the track. I've heard that several of them have said, yes, they can hear this whistle better. Um, than a basic generic whistle. However, if all you have is a generic whistle for now, that's fine too. Um, talk to your refing crew and see if there's any options that you, they have for you as far as getting, you know, a good whistle. Um, I always have mine on a lanyard because I tend not to jam ref. Um, I tend to just be on the outside. However, if you jam, if you decide you want to be a jam ref, they do make, um, like, it's kind of like a ring and it stays on your fingers. Um, and then the whistle clips onto that ring, uh, so you don't lose your whistle, but you could, you know, take your whistle out of your mouth without having to find it again, um, later on. It's like, right there, like, it's like a ring pop, there you go. You're never gonna lose it, you're never gonna drop it, um, it stays on your hand, and it's easier to, you know, jam ref with those because you're constantly having to blow the whistle, you already know that you're gonna have to blow the whistle at some point, um, uh, at the e end of every jam, so, um, that's recommended. I'll put a link below for all those tools as well. All right, so that's about it as far as what I carry in my bag. Um, obviously, your needs are always going to be your needs, and they're always personalized. So if you need a little extra, um, I know at some point I used to carry an extra little medical bag, so like extra band aids, you know, that type of thing. I kind of stopped doing that because I kind of have my own uh, because of my nursing bag because of work. I kind of just take my nursing bag with me everywhere um, and that has all the supplies but if you feel like you need to carry that um, go for it you never know when it'll come in handy so if you want to carry like a little emergency first aid kit you're more than welcome to always carry one of those as well um, but yeah just personalize these bags as you need but these are the basic necessities that you know I have come up with besides you know my normal roller derby required gear <laughs> but yeah this is what I've come up with as far as like after COVID started. So hopefully it helped you all. And especially those of you that are going from, you know, being a new skater recruit and starting to become an actual skating, playing, scrimmaging player. Um, I hope this helps, you know, you prepare your bag a little bit more. Um, some 
of us are still trying to like figure out how to fully embrace all these new skaters while we're still trying to social distance. Um, so trying to teach you all all these things that you will need is a little bit harder than it was in the past. So I hope that this video helped with that. And if you have any questions, as always, you're welcome to shoot me a message. But, you know, until next time.